I'm going to build a coffee table for our living room. I really don't want to be buying materials right now. So I decided to just use what I have already, which means old barn boards. These rough cut 2x12s came out of the floor of the barn. They're not much to look at and have some holes and stains in them. But I was hoping there could be a decent looking tabletop inside them somewhere. It's only going to take two boards to make the coffee table. So I picked out the best two and cut them in half. I wanted to use the CNC table to surface one side of the boards to start. For surfacing like this, I try to avoid clamping them directly to the table, because then when you unclamp them after the milling, they pop back up to their original shape and aren't flat anymore. So I try to secure them as they naturally sit, sometimes using shims if needed. I ripped the boards down close to their final widths, leaving a sixteenth of an inch to take off on the jointer. I use some biscuit joints between the boards to give them a little extra strength and keep them flat as they glue. The outside two boards I left wide. I could later cut the final shape of the tabletop on the CNC table. All the boards should be the same width though, what's this cut in the end, if I did my math right. I definitely used enough glue. I scraped off the excess with the paint scraper. I put the flat side down and milled the top. I took a chance and hoped it was heavy enough to stay put and not need any clamping. Justin asked if I had any ideas for an inlay and I thought framing the table with a floral accent would be cool. I found a couple of illustrations I really liked, but when I started working off them, I realized it was going to be way too much epoxy and I didn't want to cover up that much wood. So I decided to instead outline the flowers and keep it more minimal, which worked better. The wood is the pretty part and the black epoxy is the accent. Kelly and I have done quite a few inlays like this now, which I love doing because it brings the organic feel of Kelly's hand-drawn shapes to the typically mathematical and straight line oriented CNC table. I imported the JPEG Kelly sent into Aspire and bitmap traced it, which doesn't always have the best results and leaves some lines jagged as it tries to trace the pixelated image. A tool I've been using recently that makes a huge difference for this replaces the rough outline with smooth arcs that blend into each other. It works perfect for v-carving. Another thing that's improved my results with epoxy inlays is setting my start depth at a 32nd of an inch under the surface of the material. So after the epoxy dries and I'm surfacing it off, I can take off that same amount of wood and it leaves it much cleaner. I 
don't know how this thing's gonna mill. It's pretty soft wood, and I bet it's gonna chip some. I'm just gonna run it nice and slow and see how it goes. At least I have the underside to work with if I really need it. There goes nothing. I was actually really happy with how it milled. I didn't think it would be this clean in the softwood. I love seeing Kelly's sketch come out in the wood. I made a dam using some caulking and then mixed the two-part epoxy and added some black dye. I had most of the table covered by the time I was confident everything was filled. I swiped Kelly's creme brulee torch to bring out the air bubbles. Three days later, I luckily had a tiny spot on the table I could get a zero off of and ran the surfacing toolpath, taking it down a 32nd of an inch to the starting point established in the V-carve toolpath. I profiled around the outside shape of the coffee table, which I added some softer round corners to. Rounded over the edges with the router. Then I sanded everything down. Next, I'm going to make the base for the table out of metal. But before I do that, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Ariat. This is going to be a little different than most boot advertisements, because I'm going to show you a pair of broken in and well-worn boots. That's because these Ariat boots are my boots that I wear every day on the farm and here in the barn. They're my favorite pair of boots, and they go on the first thing in the morning, and don't come off until my day on the farm is done in the evening. One thing I've come to accept with a new pair of work boots is that you're going to be limping around for the first couple of weeks while they get broken in. But that wasn't the case with this pair. They were comfortable right out of the box. They're all weather work boots for me. I started wearing them back in the winter, and here I am still wearing them daily midsummer. That's because they're very breathable, and at the same time, protect my feet from all the elements. If you're working on your feet all day like me, you know how important it is to protect them and treat them right. Click the links in the description to see my favorite Ariat products and save 10% off your first order. I'm really proud to sponsor with Ariat because it's such a well-respected brand and I really want to thank them for their support. Thanks Ariat. The last thing I wanted to do for the tabletop 
was recessed in the underside where the base is going to attach to. I cut the matching tabs out on the CNC plasma cutter. I cut the frame and legs out of one and one half inch square tubing, which I had sitting on the rack from a previous project. I held everything down firmly while I gave it some big tacks. And then as soon as I could, I got the wood table back to safety, away from all the sparks and grease on the welding table. I clamped the frame down to the table while I got it all welded up. I got the end of the legs and blended them smooth before welding them onto the base. And lastly, added a cross support towards the bottom of the legs. I blended the external welds and cleaned everything up with the wire brush and wiped it down with metal cleaner. I gave it a couple coats of flat black. Went across the tabletop with some special walnut stain. I didn't want it getting too dark, so I wiped it off as soon as I was done. After it had dried, I applied the first coat of polyurethane. I applied four coats in total, lightly sanding with a fine grit in between each of them. I carefully set the drill bit so I wouldn't drill clear through the table and pre-drilled the screw holes. Yeah. 
And lastly, hand tighten down some screws. I'll be the first to admit, we aren't going to be seeing this thing in Architectural Digest anytime soon. But it was a fun little project, and it was nice using just what I had on hand. I also always have fun when I get to work on a project with Kelly. I'll call this a matching set with the dining room table I built a while back, and it's going in the same room actually. I think it fits in with our simple farmhouse decor, and it's the kind of thing I'm not going to be worried about getting scratched up or setting a drink down on without a coaster. A couple small nitpicks to keep in mind for me next time. The die bled into the soft wood a little in places, but it was pretty minimal. I used satin polyurethane, but it still turned out a little glossier than I would have liked. I think it should dull a little over time though. And I misplaced my biscuit joints on one side, dang it, so they show. I think those are all things that bug you when you're making the table, but are pretty quickly forgotten once it becomes just another table in the house. I got the table moved into the living room and thought it fit the space nice. 